All right, let me start to build a story here. Let me start at number 43. Many years ago, I had a student who did a meta-analysis on the effects of, on people's self-concept. She actually looked at children and adults. And um, across all the different programs that affect kids, people's self-concept, what she found was that the most effective by a mile were outward bound programs. Now that particular thesis had um, two major effects in my life. The first is I then decided to spend about 10 years working with the outward bound people to understand what they were doing. And spent a lot of time at their courses and working with their people and doing lots of research projects. But looking at the outward bound programs, um, it kind of sums up what I th is, is the model to me of the effective teacher. I'm going to invent a brand new game. I'm going to call it soccer. And you've never played or heard of it in your life. And I'm going to take you out into the fields here at the, um, the university, and I'm going to ask you to play the game. I'm not going to tell you what the rules are, and I'm not going to tell you what success is in scoring goals. Can you imagine the chaos that's going to happen out there? That's exactly what we ask most of our kids to do in every classroom on every day. Just do it. What you do as an instructor is you say, this is what you do, team. You take the, um, the harness and you put it on, you clip it in, then you get the rope and put it around behind your back, and then you take the rope around the tree and out until the rabbit comes out the hole, and then you pull it tight. And good instructors at this point then say, now you do it. And they stand backwards. And the students then start and they look and they say, well, what do I do? Well, we put the harness on. And actually, that's very easy. It's like sitting in an airplane seat. You just clip it in. And then they say, well, what, did the rope come around this way or did it come around this way? And was it a rabbit or a squirrel? And did it go around the tree? And what you do, what they do after a short time is they start looking at their peers to say, well, what are you doing? And one of the nice things about abseiling is if you actually get the rope wrong, it's very obvious. It slips off and you don't want that to happen. So there's a lot of peer interaction going on where you're looking. Now, at some point, the instructor comes around and checks. The salience is a pretty high here. And then you get to the point where you say, now who's going first? Now again, peer pressure gets in and someone finally gets nominated. Um, and they get to the point, and they go to the edge of the cliff, and everybody realises for the first moment that you actually don't step down. You actually have to fall backwards. And that requires an incredible amount of trust in the person who's holding the rope. And then finally, they start to go down, and if you've done it for the very first time, it's actually, you don't have much control in one sense. You, ha you do have control, but you get to the bottom. And when you get to the bottom, what do you want to do? Yeah? Go again. And the exhilaration of doing it, the emotions, are very high. This, to me, is the essence of what I think good teaching is. The learning intentions are very clear. The success criteria is absolutely obvious. The amount of peer work is dramatic. There is lots of discussion about the task amongst people. It's not all just in one head. There is peer involvement in the task. And then when you achieve the end, you want to excel and do it again and keep going. And this notion of outward bound, I think, sums up what I think you're going to see at the top of my chart. For example, the peer influences are up there. You're going to see on this number 34, challenge. It is an incredibly challenging task for those of you who have never done an abseil in your life. It is an almost dauntingly challenging task. But you succeed. And of all the years I've taught um, abseiling, we've never yet had a person who hasn't gone over, despite the incredible motion. And you don't do it by telling them. The peers encourage them. And the encouragement is very high. And they see success in those who do it. The worst thing you can do in a school the worst thing you can say as a parent is do your best. Because <laughs> that's easy. There's no challenge in doing your best because whatever you do is your best. Number 30, worked examples, is a very good example of success criteria in action. Show them what success looks like. The majority of teachers in New Zealand start most lessons with WALT, W-A-L-T. What are we learning today? That alone is not enough. What are we learning today? And this is what it looks like when it's successful. The effects are quite dramatic. Don't make it a mystery. 